Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the latest episode of Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station, where we uh, uh, where we are picking up immediately from last episode, where during peace talks with several of the local inhabitants, two Borg spheres just showed up out of the transwarp hub. Uh, you, a woman named Verity still decked out in her full Borg gear, identified themselves as the Unimatrix Zero Interlink and requested asylum and protection. And that is where we cut things off. So we are going to cut to ops where a, most likely a very panicking captain and senior staff is going to discuss things. Captain Crawford, what is your response? Um, that is a damn good question. Uh, because as far as we're aware, at least in our current timeline, all the board were gone. That right? is correct. Hmm. Uh, let's have... Uh, he isn't here, but... I'm sure someone could roll for him. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a way we can scan just Verity to see if they're part of the collective, if that makes any sense? Uh, difficult to do with just trying to pick out a single Borg in a, in a sphere. Granted, there are fewer Borg drones on the ship as normal. There's only about 150 per sphere. Instead of okay. the typical s several thousand, I believe. One thousand, I think, for Sphere. Um, but... Um, okay, in that case, let's make it more of like an overall scan and see if we can maybe cross-reference it with our scans of Borg who are part of the Collective and see if they're not part of the Collective from okay. wherever they're from. Okay. Um, that will be either a um, Lieutenant Dusk, you're running operations, sort of. Are you equipped to run scans like that? I mean, in a pinch. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have a... I, I have literally a reason science of nine. Do you have reason? Um, What's could... your engineering? Uh, my engineering's at least a little bit better. It's a three, but that's still an eleven. Uh, I could order... I think it might be better maybe if we have like someone like Usher or Deckard come up here and run this scan. Okay. Since they're a little better when it comes to Borg stuff. We can bring either of those up. So you're just oh. going to put yeah. the potentially threatening presence on hold while we call people up to the ops. Cool, we can do that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I can talk to Ver Verity. Yeah. Yeah. Let I'll I'll let Dorum handle that while I'm ordering science officers around. So I'm gonna go down and stand in front of the hollow screen. Okay. <laughs> what was your name again? My name was Verity. Well, my name is Verity. I represent the Interlink Survivors. Interlink Survivors. It's what we've taken to call the reformatted Unimatrix Zero. I believe the Federation... I recall the Federation Voyager had a hand in its initial destruction and our liberation. From our records and from what I remember off the top of my head, yes, the Voyager had a run-in with what you guys called Unimatrix Zero One? Mm. She nods. It's very... It's... And that is why that was led to our free... Our individualities returned to us when it was destroyed. It's also why we weren't liberated with the rest of the Collective. Her gaze that hardens. Was... That was going to be our my next question. How did you survive the destruction of the Collective? 
we were not given a choice. Commander, um, you may not recognize what I am underneath all this. And she makes a grand gesture as if showing herself off like a fashion model. But I was once human. My parents were quite religious. And we had a term of the rapture where all the sinners went to heaven in a blink of an eye. Or all the sinners... Now, ah, sorry. GM mix up. All the saints were immediately brought to heaven and the sinners left on earth. That's how it felt. Those of us who had our individuality returned to us were not saved we weren't given a choice fair enough so you've been adrift for lack of a better way of putting it for this many years we've been rebuilding the interlink and it's at this point that usha can come onto the bridge i should also note that captain hamasi was on the station for the peace talks and at the moment is just looking over the railings near the conference room entrance keeping an eye on things I'm playing four characters in this scene <laughs> if you wish. would you like a we block should... text you know we can no no I, I can do four characters Yeah. so when Usha walks in Hamasi shouts over Usha scan now and she just points at a console and Aria gets out of the way, and Usha comes up to the console and says, uh, Lieutenant Dusk, I need you to authorize this. Co oh, you've already done so. Thank you. And uh, Usha begins running her scan. Awesome. I'm assuming this is a reason engineering board technology is a focus. Yes. Yep. yep. What is the difficulty? Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three task, and the ship can assist with um, sensors engineering. Have a threat for a third die. I'll take it. Survey says two successes. So if the station yep. could roll a success, that would be lovely. Uh, I can grab the station. Sensors engineering, you said? Yep. All right. You had one dot, one station. Good job. <laughs> uh, so the, um, with the... It's very difficult getting a read on the Borg technology and filtering it out with the background radiation of the Carceri Nebula and the Transwarp Hub. Your scans are inconclusive, I'm afraid. All right, so Usha shouts, Sorry, sir, I got nothing. Uh, they're Borg. That's about all I can tell you. And Amasi just sort of rolls her eyes and says, Yes, I can see that. Thank you, Usha. <laughs> and Aria just sort of pats Usha on the back, and it's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, next time I'm running a game, ELH is playing all the characters. I'll do it. Don't tell <laughs> me. I'll do it. Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, I want to see that happen. Uh, see, I think at this point, Mal, Dolrum's at least semi keeping Verity busy. Mm -hmm. Hamatsi is also on the bridge. He's going to, at this point, kind of like quickly kind of walk over to her. Um, and he kind of has this grim look of just he doesn't know what to do but he just kind of speaks anyway it's just like um, I know there's history of Borg being freed from the collective but with the amount of people on this station that have been affected by the Borg letting some on this station doesn't seem like the smartest idea no, it would not be prudent to do so. However, you do have the uh, responsibility to respond to the request for asylum. Do you have a means to deny them, or do you have a reason to deny them? I don't and know. Almost if, might be... uh, to add further urgency, dust calls across the room. Uh, sirs, the rest of the fleet is asking what the hell they should be doing. Um, we probably have some Get down to yellow alert. Yeah, that that's probably a good idea because they aren't trying to kill us right now. Um, well, their weapons aren't even charged. That's true. Uh, yeah, let's 
calm things down a bit at first by having the station and the uh, fleet ships go down to yellow alert. <laughs> um, let's have Keevan uh, as quickly as he can prepare whatever spare rooms on spare decks that are away from these talks uh prepared for refuge Keevan raises See? a qu quick eyebrow um sir the scans of the Borg spheres indicate that their environment is already perfectly set as long as the spheres remain docile I don't see why we need to bring them over this is also true well uh, Lieutenant Commander Demos were you about to say something yeah if they're requesting asylum we should find out what they need an asylum from uh, and the numbers of them they could actually fit on one of the ships if we want to keep them off of their spheres off the station and keep everyone happy we can put them on one of the vessels it's only 300 people course um at this and then after that brief discussion he'll actually go join uh dolrum down by the hollow meter where verity is you called yourself verity yes i that is that was my pre-assimilation name yes see um I know you're asking for asylum, and we're more than willing to give that to you, but do you mind if I ask first what you're asking for asylum from? <laughs> Captain, the Bo there is no species in this galaxy that is more hatred than what the Borg were. I'm asking for asylum from everyone, for all of those, all of us who have survived this purge or salvation or whatever the hell you want to call it of course but if I may be able to give you some brief information we can gladly let you stay within the station space but we might not be able to let you within the station itself as we're in talks with many species that have been affected by the Borg, and we wouldn't want to scare them. Yes, we... That, and we don't necessarily have the space. Most of our rooms are too much taken. If I may be so... Well, she quickly nods at the mention of the other species. We ran a quick bioscan when we showed up, and detected several species that have been known to the Collective. As for space... And potential permanency homes that transwarp hub is currently vacant isn't it uh, yes it certainly is and he kind of glances over to demos like does that seem safe <laughs> he doesn't one... say that but gives you like a look saying that he just looks at verity and is like Last time an away team was over there, some of the wall tubules tried to grab them. If you can, I don't know, I'm perfectly fine with having them over there. It's their tech, after all, and it would give us an advantage on learning how these transwarp conduits work. It's true, there's no better experts than the Borg themselves. It's their technology. I would like to revisit one of these ships, though, just to confirm that they are individuals. Would you be okay with that, Verity? Of course, my. We are more than happy to bring aboard an. I think you've Starfleet called it an away team. Yes. Indeed. Uh, long term, though. I mean, the Transwarp Hub is great short term shelter, but long term, would you guys like to be? resettled or just looking for an instant place for the moment we are we would like a place where we can all congregate first we typically communicate through the interlink 
which is perfectly fine for sh short communications and well some people just some of us don't actually ever leave them it's quite sad but a place where we can form a cohesive society outside of digital space would be greatly appreciated captain Commander. And while that's happening, uh, Hamasi spots the ambassador coming yeah. in and cuts him off and says, Ah, oh, Ambassador Kavas, hi, what can we do for you? I had heard a rumor that there was Borg, and she immediately sees the holographic specter, and her eyes narrow. Captain. Her tone gets very cold very quick. Captain, the, the fact that you're not shooting these in the sh immediately indicates that our ally, our friendly alliance, may not go so well if you continue to uh, harbor any nonviolent tendencies towards these beings. Be gonna get up and walk on over. So Hamasi just sort of smiles at that and says. Tell me, Ambassador, did you, in your species history, did you have mass murderers? Of course. It's part of the colonial... Ex it was part of the original Vitars expansion. Those who... I see. Now, let's say that all I knew of your species was those mass murderers. Would it be fair for me to tell you that I'm going to shoot you for the actions of someone else? Her, she sputters and stammers for a brief second. Well, of course not. Then I think you see my point. This is a different group of Borg. Her eyes narrow. If you will excuse me, captains, I have an immediate communication to send to my Imperator. And oh, she... no, please. Right here. Console's available. And Hamasi lances across the key, uh, panel, and there's a panel right there available for them. I will use the secure diplomatic channels from my embassy. Thank you so kindly. Please, let me guide you back to your embassy. And I'll escort her back. Well. Oh, Rust just sort of says, yeah, that could have gone better, Captain. And Lassie rolls her eyes. Dusk, just tell the other captains to expect some kind of nonsense with our guests well commander it looks like we'll need to assemble an away team I will get on that short with Faraday will be over here within the next 45 minutes to an hour with a uh, away team um, and we can talk more in person I am I am excited, Captain, Commander, and look forward to meeting you in person. Likewise. And Crawford, and Crawford will give, like, a slight bow before the communication cuts off. <laughs> we all take a big... <sighs> okay, so... Who decided to let an ambassador up into ops? There's a flustered security guard at the door and just said, Sorry, sir. She's been on the station for so long. She just kind of knew how, how to get here. Um, I'm going to have to tighten up security for... We can't have that happening again. The uh, security officer gets a, re a text report from Demos. Uh... <laughs> command codes for uh, the uh, operations turbo lift only now. <laughs> uh, and apparently Midas apparently Demos left so quick that he left Midas behind. He's just been floating around people. Yeah. Uh, Midas? Yes? Are you alright? I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> he just sits down on the hall projector now. Midas, you are a character. I am Midas. Indeed. And it looks like we have our chief engineer now. 
Oh, has he joined? Hello. Hello, hello. Sorry, late. better late than never. Yes, you're just in time to beam over to a Borg cube. Or a Borg uh, sphere, I should say. If you wish. Uh, nice! <laughs> okay, so, you have a bunch of angsty diplomats. Uh, one of them, who has actually seen what's going on. And an invitation to a Borg sphere. Um, Captain Crawford, what do you wish to do? Um, Crawford's gonna stay on the station and kind of try to, you know, play damage control, basically. Okay. Um, I'll be taking, uh, in terms of the away team, I'll take, uh, Crewman Dura. Okay, so let me just start playing with tokens here. As, uh... As a counter argument, I mean Hamas is here. You could go on the away mission. Yeah, but yeah, since Captain Crawford, can come <laughs> my, my logic here is this is Crawford Station, and he probably will need to be the one that does the damage control rather than someone who's in charge of a ship that's in the fleet. Of no offense to Hamasi. Yes. Hamasi could come with us to the on the away mission. I mean, yeah, if Dolrum wants Hamasi to lead it, she can. But I was going to defer to you if you wanted to lead it. I, I was planning on going over, but I'm not opposed to Hamasi go, coming with us. Nah, I think Hamasi would, in the girl power group, she's just going to send Usha with you. Fair enough. All right. Okay, so Usha. Okay, so we have one for Scotty, one for ELH, um, one for Spencer. Um, uh, Mr. Keevan, who are, are you bringing? Are you bringing Keevan or someone else? To a Borg Sphere. Yes. Yes. Uh, we're going to send... You know what? We're going to send Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I you cut out for me. Who are you sending? We're sending Tuesday. Who's Tuesday? I don't know that name. That's that's the new engineer that um, Demos made up for. Us. He's actually the fabricator. Ah, of course. Okay, a new character. Fantastic. Oh, the Gorn. Yes. Thing. Cool. Okay, we'll make that happen. And I believe you're welcome, Delrum. And um, Demos, are you coming over or are you bringing someone else? Uh, so, Keevan, you're playing Tuesday or am I playing Tuesday? Oh, if you want Tuesday, he's your character. Go for it. You just gotta do the voice. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know the voice, it's all yours. <laughs> okay. I'll be Tuesday then. Okay. That still leaves um, Keevan. Do you want to bring someone? This is why I should have been here earlier, but that's yep. a long story. We don't need to bore everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, let's bring. Okay, who do we got? So uh, we have uh, we have an, we have Dura, we have Dalrum, we have Usha, and we have the fabrication engineer D Tuesday. We could use a medical person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was about to say I was going to see Calvin Jensen. Let's do that. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Jensen, fantastic. Okay, so what is going to happen here? We are going to uh, carry out the station diplomacy as an extended task uh, that will happen over multiple scenes. So those who are staying behind can assist. Uh, this is going to be a work track of 15. It's going to have Ooh. a difficulty of 4 to start. A, uh, let's see, da, da, resistance of four and magnitude of three. I so um, so this is going to be a diplomacy check basically keeping the station's diplomats from not rioting and behaving themselves and trying to keep the peace talks in some form of order. Uh, so diplomacy style checks, negotiation, um, security if you want to be a heavy-handed. Uh, I just have a simple suggestion to keep everyone calm and relaxed and happy. Uh, anesthesine into all of the diplomatic quarters. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> that was coming. Oh, no. Uh, 
That will just make things worse if we drug them. That's for future us, not current <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah, but bad idea. In the future, they're like, past, our, past us are jerks. <laughs> Besides, the Nalu and the Medeal are probably immune to a necessary gas, especially with the Medeal, any of them are, that are in the transport cube. It's fine. Um, we're, yeah, I think we should just diplomacy this, and I think... Uh, what, probably Crawford and Hamasi can work in tandem for this, CLH? Mm-hmm. I would think so. And I mean, I'm rocking a presence command of 16. I'm rocking a presence command of 15, but I think for at least this first task, I'll have Crawford lead this. Okay. <clears throat> and keep in mind that despite this being a two-parter, you guys have the your determination back and no momentum at the moment. Booyah! Uh, let's see, so... Okay, so... so presence command... Um... Let's see... Uh, would... If I wanted to use determination for two successes, would the value of all people are welcome, no matter where from, apply here? I think that would work out rather well, yes. Okay. Would you like Paul to assist? Um, I'm gonna have Hamasi assist here. <clears throat> see, so, uh, oh. I will give you two threat for a third die. Okay. Or fourth die, but we all know how that works, yeah. yep. And I do have a focus. Oh, Okay, that's Ooh, six successes that's already. Nice. That's already two momentum and oh, another eight two. successes. And because Boy. I have augmented ability presence, that's actually three successes from Mossy. Good. So we just nice. get five oh, momentum. I think we did. Beautiful. So you guys have given the most eloquent speech. And that has pacified even these most staunchest of... Um, Ambassadors, um, most like most, including the Vitars and the Kasala, the four-armed individuals, yep. who have direct, or who the Borg basically took over the coals. So they are the most hostile at the moment. So, okay, are we uh, still doing challenge dice or no? Uh, oh yes, I'm sorry, that's right. Challenge dice would be good, please. Uh, so that'd be seven challenge dice from you, Crawford. Okay. Okay, and so... just spend two momentum to get rid of the, uh, the yeah. resistance. May as well. Yeah. Okay, that brings us to a work track of uh, six. Nope. I can math. Nine. No. Eight. Eight. <laughs> I can't well, math, apparently. That's better math than mine tonight. <laughs> ha, fair enough. Okay, that's taken care of for there. So, anybody have anything else they wish to do before beaming over to the Borg Sphere? Any particular scenes? Uh, I just want to use Krav Maga as a diplomatic option against one of the ambassadors. No, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, now I'm off down dealing with security right now and making sure that all turbo lift access is now with authorization codes from Starfleet personnel. Fair enough. We're going to have to have the equivalent of an elevator man. Oh, I am going to message Decon. Oh, yes. Okay, and what are you messaging Decon? To meet me in security office. Okay. Is that something you want to play out? Sure. Okay, it'll, it'll be quick, and then we'll get to the Borg Sphere. Security office is here somewhere. <clears throat> Decon wanders in. No, she sort of struts in. Demos, have you reconsidered my off my um offer to assist you with eliminating all organic life? Uh, yeah, I'm still putting on hold for now. Oh, then why did you summon me? me? I was just gonna say about that offer. I'll get back to me about two hundred years, okay? Noted. Starting a countdown. Excellent. Um. I remember you telling me once when we first met that 
little bitey things had attacked your empire. The Borg, right? Yes. Little bitey things that kept gnawing away, t turning our infrastructure against us. Well, I wanted to let you know if you haven't already figured it out. You know the Borg are gone now. I'm pretty sure I filled you in on what happened to them, roughly. I have the... gotten... I have received that pertinent data, yes. So, as a collective, they're gone. The entity, that destructive nature, is gone. There are still people that were taken by them, though, that are still around. And some of them are here. I see. They're not the ones that took your people. I the see. The Borg operate off of a hive mind, only answering to one individual called the Queen, and her goal was to assimilate everything, to take their will away, and use them as soldiers to expand. They're not your enemy. Not these people, anyways. I see. If you want to hit something, I'm right here. I will hit something in my, when I am ready. Well, make sure it's me. Okay. Okay. Are you okay, though? I am functioning within normal capacity. I wish that this body was was had a proper armature so that I could uh, further my desire to end most life. But yes, I am functioning within the parameters that your station has assigned me. If you want to talk, I'm here. And I know you're capable of more. I see. You just... I shall take the initiative. And by that I mean don't go after them. I just mean if you're not happy, you can talk to me about it. I must process this, these feelings. I will talk when I am ready. Okay. And she spins on her stiletto boots. Why people decided to build an android with stiletto boots built in is beyond me, but that's what she has. And she struts out of the office. Emos just looks at Midas and is like, <sighs> Okay, Midas. This is... This is going to be a day. Uh, and... So, you in... So, uh, scene change, so you lose one momentum. And you find yourself on... The transport... Uh, ah. The transport goes without a hitch. And you find yourself on the cramped, humid uh, Borg's... Uh, environment of a Borg sphere. It is as claustrophobic and as green as you, as the uh, data files have said that a Borg environment is. And the Borg drones that wander around, instead of ignoring you, are actually paying at least a modicum of attention to you as they wander past. There are several in various states of de-assimilation. Some are fully or are as full unborg as they could be. Think seven of nine level. Whereas others are still wearing their full plate, including the individuals who are going to meet you, which are here. Verity, the one that uh, you've identified that had reached out to you at first, is the first to step up. Uh, she extend, uh, One of her armatures is a, bo is a clamp that seems to open and shut on its own volition, while the other is an organic hand. Behind her is a taller individual, roughly six foot two. Humanoid, doesn't look quite human. Um, as full decked out Borg as they come. Uh, one of his hands is um, as if it was uh, in a borgified body glove of some sort, and the other one is an arm, a weapon armature. 
Verity steps forward. Ah. Starfleet, welcome aboard Borg Sphere 839248. Oh, we don't care. <laughs> Thanks for having us. As she... Um, so, I'm assuming people are... Are people pulling out tricorders, phaser rifles? What do you guys wish to do? Medical I mean, Usha is... Yeah, I was going to say, Usha's got a tricorder out. Okay. Um, so, you are welcome to scan the ship, which will be a Insight Engineering. Uh, scan the Borg would be Insight Medical. Um, and anything else you want to look for, just ask. Uh, this will be a difficulty of... If you're scanning interior style, it'll be difficulty two each. And if you're trying to just get an overall scan of things, that'll be a larger difficulty. But Hoya! Okay, Mr. Jensen, that is one momentum. Okay, uh, what f what were you looking for there, Mr. D uh, Calvin Jensen? Uh, he was scanning up, trying to see any of the Borg nearby. You know, see if there's anything out of the ordinary um, okay. or is it just a normal mixture of a boy okay uh, so you pick up um, uh, so both Verity and Rusik the individual that she has identified as her partner are both scan as close to a Borg drone as one can imagine with the exception that they are actually talking instead of you know, ignoring you or trying to assimilate you. Uh, they are wearing, they are in full Borg Exo gear. Uh, you pick up these signature of nan, um, nano probes inside of them. Uh, as for the, uh, as for the life signs around, there are, they're all adults. Uh, there are no infants or. Uh, maturing Borg, I should say, within your current scans. And they're, by assuming the individuals that are within your scan radius are statistically similar, or statistically significant, you estimate that about 50% of the Borg, or of these individuals, are D, have uh, taken steps to get rid of at least some of their external uh, gear. Uh, okay, so noted. Yep. Usha, you are scanning the communications and the overall systems of the Borg sphere. Yep. Um, so the uh, the collective frequencies that they use to talk to the Borg viniculum are active. So there is communication going between, at least localized. You'd have to get a better look at the viniculum itself to see what it might be doing to the collective as a whole. But there seems to be at least some internal communication going over the collective frequencies. Fun. Quite. Um, the, the ship itself, um, it does appear to be low powered. Um, they're not as full staffed as it was. And this sort of matches an initial scan of the probe, which or scan of the sphere which indicated that several of the sections have just degraded over time. Uh, this is backed up with uh, Tuesday's uh, scanning methods. And I think I'm going to take the threat for that zero. He's testing, uh, he's checking to see how the force fields are holding up. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, the construction of the sphere does, indic does fall into normal parameters. Uh, there are p sections of the sphere that have been depowered. Um, at least that's what you're able to see from here. As Verity continues, Verity waits patiently. Starfleet and their scans. We've gone come a very long way in a very short period of time by being observant and thorough. There was a time I had to escape the thoroughness, which ironically enough, led me here. So I suppose I have you to thank for my assimilation. I'm 
sorry. I, I don't know how to respond to that one. But... She shrugs. <laughs> it's, it is what it is. I mean, I could hold a grudge, several, Lord, but we know enough. Ah, we have encountered enough species that hold a grudge to know when it's better to take the high road. Well, unfortunately, holding a grudge against somebody doesn't get anything done. Oh, it gets things done. Just the results are never what you want. Uh, please, uh, follow me and I will bring you to the interlink so you can see how things go. Or how we communicate. Lead the way. Uh, so she takes the lead and Rusik follows in the rear. Ensuring that the group stays together. There, it has been several at first we didn't know what to do there was just so much chaos so many Borg so much of us spread out you know a Borg cube of 10,000 plus drones and there were three of us that survived and that must have been scary considering I don't think this a structure like this can run with just three <laughs> Uh, she sort of laughs, and there's a machine undertone to it. It, sound, it sounds as if at least the lower registers of her voice are synthetically assisted. It was difficult trying to orchestrate, trying to rebuild the collective. Most, there were several that just couldn't handle it and self-destructed with the ship they were on or stationed. Some just watched their environment slowly decay over time. Others, like me, fought. Tried to get as many together as possible and try to build a society. Hell, it wasn't long until Transwarp Gate started failing because there were just no, not enough Borg to maintain the network. Is that what draw you to us, is that our network was still operational? Yes, actually, it was one of your ships. I believe it was the uh, Horizon. We picked up a Federation signal deep in the Gamma Quadrant that uh, we followed it there. It turned out to be a gateway structure. We didn't go through it at first. We performed some quiet and evaluations, poked, prodded a little bit. Well, and then eventually the remnants caught up to us and we had to make a move. So, here we are, Captain. Here we are, Commander. So, we are taking... Please, oh my mighty benevolent federation of planets, she says, with a bit of mirth and irony. We are requesting... A, we, are require, we are requesting asylum and def... Asylum and protection from those that wish to do us harm. All of us, of course. What you see here is, well, what little we could get together in such a short period of time. Approximately how many of you are left? She pauses for a second, bringing the whole convoy to a stop. I'm not going to lie, Commander. Uh... Last interlink since census we took, there's at least two billion of us. Um, two billion that are free from the collective. Yes. That's. Of, uh, of no offense to you, that's quite an alarming number. It's simple math, actually. The Borg numbered in trillions, trillions of drones. The Unimatrix mutation. At least some of the scientists who know more about this than me was, you know, two in ten thousand. That is still a significant number of Borg drones left behind. Now, the numbers, of course, have thinned. Some due to separatist actions, some due to suicide, others because the galaxy hates us. Of course. I'm sorry to hear about that.
So that's why you want to use the this transwar part hub as a rally point. It's a place where you can come together and then establish a new society, not necessarily a collective, but a new society. Yes. That is a, an apt term. Somehow this uh, gay, this hub has stayed active and at least partially functional. The rest of the network is in shambles. I, I'm sorry. I, I've been lost in my scans. You said something about the remnants caught up to you? Well, yes. She... There are... Nothing galvanizes multiple species than a unified or than a single hated enemy. The Borg were... The Borg created many enemies, and there are... Some of them have banded together no, and have begun calling themselves the Remnant Alliance. Hmm. Maybe she just goes back to her tricorder, but she is definitely sending that little tidbit to Girl Power Squad back on server station. <laughs> I love that we have the Girl Power Squad. <laughs> We'll have to touch base on your knowledge of the remnants because that sounds like they could become a problem for you and then in turn possibly a problem for us. She nods just silently. Anyways, uh, she brings you into a large open chamber. Um, there is a... I'm sorry... Um, Usha, you would recognize this as the Borg Viniculum. It is a diamond, sh or it's a prism-shaped structure, green in color, as fits the motif. Uh, there are several Borg regeneration um, bays all around it. Uh, Usha, I'll give this for you, to you for free because you know, uh, because you've been scanning. Uh, you do detect active. Uh, signals being sent and received through the through the viniculum to outside the uh, sphere of uh, outside this sphere. Where it's going, you're not entirely sure. You'd probably have to directly interface with it to get more information, but traffic is definitely flowing. Hmm. I'm keeping an eye on it, but unless the opportunity presents itself, I'm not going to like plug into it or anything. Yeah. Uh, she, this is, well, you, most Starfleeters, I'm sh Well, actually, how long has it been since the Borg? About 30 years. Well, yeah, most of you probably haven't even seen a viniculum before. Here it is. It talks to other Borg viniculum and was at one point the main method of the Borg Queen asserting her will upon us all and ensuring that we had none. Now, we still use it, of course. The interlink thrives on it, but it's more of a... Homing beacon. I was going to use the more of a... What's the... F ah, more of a... Inter interconnected network of peers. If I were to plug into any one of these bays, I could establish a connection to any other... Um, Borg, I hate that word. Uh, int Unimatrix member plugged into a similar s network on any other ship across the galaxy. Yeah, we even rebuilt the uh, Unimatrix Zero, although of course we now call it Interlink. If one of you wants to see what that looks like, and she takes three steps back, so she's uh, she um, extends some uh, tubules from her hands. It would be a simple modification to um, provide the surgery, to provide the needed implant for you to inject yourself into the interlink. I think we're going to pass on that for the time being, although I have to admit I'm curious. Yes, well, that's trust for you. Well, you understand we just have to be cautious. 
This is not that we don't trust you. We're just cautious. She shrugs. Rusik just grunts in the back. Well, it's not every day that a random starbase several light years away from the Federation receives two Borg spheres asking for protection. Unless that has happened in the past, but you probably would have made, had a procedure for that by now. Yeah, I have Certainly. to say this is our first dabble into the Borg. To our knowledge, they were, well, for lack of a better way of putting it, eradicated. She just no. Nah, she just smiles and shakes her head. Well, Commander, have you? Are you satisfied that we are not going to assimilate you and take your freedom of thought and conscience away from you yet? I am. For right now, let's get you guys together. Is there any medical needs that? need to be taken care of anything that you guys need materials wise well several of us who have deassimilated themselves find that they are requiring more and more physical sustenance instead of the red uh, regeneration procedures one of those fancy Star Trek or Starfleet replicators that makes food on command would go a great would uh, do great wonders for our uh, health and well-being. Hey, Tuesday. Yes, Commander. By chance, do we have any spare replicators? Yes. How hard do you think it would be for us to hook one up in here for them to be able to synthesize food to those who have... Uh, separated themselves from their Borg implants. I would advise against a replicator. I would recommend a protein sequencer. Do we have any of those? Yes. How long would it take you to put one in? Moments. Make it so. Excellent. Now, Verity, let's see if we can get you over to the Transwar Pub and get you guys set up into a little bit more of a settlement than two spheres that are slowly dilapidated around everybody. Very well, Ka Very well, Commander. Uh, she jerks her head slightly to the side, sending a signal. Um, all the Borg nearby uh, just pause. Uh, those, and many of them uh, smile, and you're buffeted by several verbal thank yous that echo th that resonate throughout the chamber. Well, as Captain Hamasi said to one of the ambassadors on our station who <clears throat> rudely interrupted our talk before, we can't base an entire civilization or species off its worst moments in history. There are many who still do, Commander. Doesn't make it right, and we're not going to do that. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, how are you going to coordinate the move? Uh, I say we direct both severe spheres to the Transwarp, like the central hub of the Transwarp hub, uh, and do like a delta pattern of three of the fleet ships as an escort in okay. case anybody decides that they're going to shoot a fireball. <laughs> Good plan. Uh, if I can put an input in there, uh, the Roosevelt will actually go MVM. Uh, MVAM and... Uh, Break themselves up to extend their shields. Fair enough. Okay. We are going to... 
All right. Cut back to the station where I quickly sent ELH a message of what Dusk mm -hmm. is seeing. Okay. Captain Crawford, they are in the middle of their ambassadorial mission to the Borg Sphere, and Dusk has something. Captain, I'm determined to be approximately 12 uh, unknown ship designs assembling outside of Gate 14. They do not match anything on record. Hmm. And all of the uh, ships in the fleet are currently helping the Borg, correct, Lieutenant? They are parked outside, if that's what you mean, yes. Um, have a couple of them stand by for what, in case these ships are hostile, but on screen. All right. Okay. And uh, Dusk tells Crowley and Kotel to go check it out. Okay. So Crowley was the Roosevelt and Hotel was the Armhurst? Yep. Mm -hmm. Amherst. Amherst, uh, my bad. Crowley was setting up a defensive field for the Borg, just in case the diplomats tried anything. Well, the diplomat ships are, are safe and secure inside the station's internal docking bay. They'd have to blast out of the station if to do something. Plus, you have a multi-vector ship to split up. He already did that. We'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Each section now just has one nacelle. <laughs> it's a multi multi vector ship. <laughs> Recursion. Six ships now. Six. <laughs> okay. It's transformed so many times, it's now uh, Galvatron. Uh. So... No, actually, each ship is made out of a million nanobots. Yes. <laughs> Wasn't that the plot to JJ? You know what? I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't go there. Don't go there. Probably for the best. <laughs> so, um, just at this point where um, Dalrum has uh, updated the captain on the Borg spheres heading to the Transorp hub under protection, the fleet, our uh, dust, the fleet of ships begins entering the gate and making their way through. Well, whatever they are, sir, they're going to be on screen here momentarily. All right, let's wait and see what these things are. This is a crowded, crowded map. Okay. <laughs> really need to get a larger background made. So we are going to cut here. You know what? For the moment, I'm just moving all of the Borg stuff off the map. Just As shrink they... us all down. Yeah, that could work too. <laughs> okay, you, you. Ah, wrong button, and I deleted half the ships I was going to bring in. Oh, Michael. Mm. Control, Control Z, Z. Uh, yeah. is your friend. Yes, yes it is. Borg spheres are here. It must be cold outside, they shrunk. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold in space. <laughs> We're in a nebula. Okay, let's redo these. There's that, there's that. Uh, let's see, there were three Those of them. Some ships. Three of them. And there are four of them, three of them, and two of these guys. Okay. So, what comes through the nebula are two large two large heavily or two large blocky ships um, they would be literal tanks and um, at first glance they would be scale six there are several others uh, smaller ships that are of obviously a different manufacturer they are more slim lined and much smaller uh, scale three and scale fours um, so uh, they are going to immediately 
So half of them are going to immediately move between the Borg spheres and the Transwarp hub. Whereas the and other half are going to make their way towards the station. Oh, Lieutenant button. Darval, open hailing frequencies with one of the larger ships if you can. Yes, Captain. Opening uh, frequencies are open. Unknown vessel, this is Captain Crawford of the Federation Station, Deep Space 15. State your business for being here. And who uh, who appears is this thing. Um, it's a uh, fully are uh, fully encased in at first glance would be some sort of environmental suit. It is roughly three feet tall, uh, pudgy with short arms and stubby legs. Captain Crawford of the United Federation of Planets. We are. I represent the. Oxirish, the Oxirish people of the Remnants Alliance. We are here to continue to clear the scourge of the Borg out from our, from the sector of space. If you are, if you insist on protecting them, then you will find yourself on our list as well. Do we've been able to confirm? Uh that the Borg you're here to exterminate are no longer part of the Collective. You do know that that can happen, correct? We are aware of the change of the Borg. We are aware that most of their species, most of their kind vanished. But that does not... But as long as one remains the galaxy continues to be at risk and that is not something we are going to that is not something we are going to deal ah stand by and abide well these borg have asked for asylum and we're more than willing to give them it but I think you should be willing to listen to either me or them first. There is... We are in no... We are in no position. We are... Ah! We have no desire to listen. Those of the... Those of our people... Ah! Those of the remnants saw their species decimated. Destroyed. They will... And... Most have most that survive want nothing more than vengeance. And that is what we are going to do. Now, ha stand down, Captain. He's because Elh, you said Usha sent something about the remnants back to the station, correct? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Crawford will send a quick test message back to, we'll say, both Dolrum and Usha at this point, and be like, you might want to get the hell off those spheres. The remnants are here. And Usha just sort of relays that to uh, Commander Dolrum and says, ah, we probably don't want to be here any longer, sir. Uh, Verity no. backs that up immediately. Um, whichever, um, sh so half of the Roosevelt that is alongside the sphere, um, the captain is, uh, Captain Crawford, nope, not Captain Crawford, Captain Crowley, oh. receives a message in Borg speech, lower your shields and prepare to receive your, your crew. And Demos is muted. While he is, I would simply point out if these Borg are Borg, they don't yeah. give a shit about shields. That is true. They do have advanced transporters. I, I wrote that ship down, or I wrote that feat down. So, yeah. Uh, with a blink of her eye and a nod of her head, the away team all of a sudden materializes on the transporter pad of the USS Roosevelt. A very surprised ensign is... 
flabbergasted. Yeah, very surprised. Ensign is very surprised. Roll for surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so while I'm not anticipating combat, I'm just going to move us to here just so that I could get a more tactical sense of where everyone is. Okay, so we have... I am prepared for combat. As am I. <laughs> I mean, I am too at this point. We said we were giving these people asylum, yeah. and I feel like we should be able to fight for them if they want to kill them. So... Okay. Probably should fix their tokens so they look nicer on battle maps. I'll figure that out eventually. Done here. Okay, so we're going to run this in a fleet combat style, I think. Because, holy cow, there's just far too much for me to keep track of. Well, it's been nice knowing the Roosevelt. Right. Is. Fleet, fleet combat is deadly. Yeah, yeah, it is. Bye, Roosevelt. But, Bye, Cerberus. But well, Cerberus. But we have, we have two Borg spears on our side, question mark? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Borg yeah, will help. That. Hey, I also still have our Deus Essamachnia. I mean, um, my new shielding. <laughs> Well, have we talked about that part yet in game? Kind of, but we only did it on the um, Apollo, not on the not on the ah, station. Yes. Fair enough. Oh, I thought we were at the concept talk. I, I didn't know we actually did it. Ah. Kind Surprise? of maybe, sort of, but that's the Apollo, so that's, yeah, I'm just joking. Fair enough. Ramming speed. This isn't the Dark Royal. <laughs> That's not who I wanted. It could be if you just pretend hard enough. <laughs> no, Dark Life. Royal. Dark Royal is uh next episode. Hashtag spoilers. <laughs> oh. Could be. We could show up and see the station just, you know, debris. It's like the fuck happened here. <laughs> well, it seems that uh certain captains, Captain Dominus is now the head of the operations here in the <laughs> science fans. Okay. Welcome to uh, Deep Space Base Dark Royal. <laughs> I'm just imagining you, like, getting those... Na you know what, never mind, that's that's going too far into the weeds. Y'all <laughs> ain't breaking my station. <clears throat> no, that's I mean, called salvage claiming. Because it's all based on... Uh, it's been a while since I've done it. It's all based on scale, isn't it? Uh, for turns? Uh, for what you're rolling. I believe so, yes. Let me actually pull up my homebrew and see what it says, because I noted it there. Oof, oof, yeah. Smaller ship to fuck. Yes, here we are. Rules is written. Uh, you get two scores, attack and defense. Mm -hmm. And both of those scores are equal to the vessel scale or the total scale of the group. And you roll your attack against the defender pool. Uh, if one, whoever's side has more successes, the other side becomes damaged. If they're already damaged, they blow up. And a damage group only takes a single action each turn. That sounds about accurate. Okay. There was fleet combat was in command book, right? Yep, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, throw this lovely PDF That's... into Discord for you because it's good. got everything you need. Good plan, folks. Okay, so. Right now. So, um, that is pretty much where we're at here. And, so. The, few, I will, I will allow the few transporter effects to take effect so that the Cerberus crew is all on Cerberus station again. Sure. Yeah. Makes it, makes it easier to keep track of people. 
And I believe good guys still go first. All right, so who's attacking what first? Yeah, it's a good question. Also, McCall, yep. uh, can you give us uh, some bars oh. to uh, mess with the attack defense on all these tokens? Do I not? Oh, I forgot to enable all that stuff. Hooray. I are good GM. I mean, if you want, we could take our break here, and then yeah. uh, when we come back, we'll have all those. That's a good idea. Let's take a 10-minute break. We will come back at quarter past the hour, and at that point, McCall might have his uh, stuff together. <laughs> all right. That sounds we, good. We are muted. And yes. we That's are fun. we are back for the GM's um, f initial foray into fleet combat. This is going to be interesting. We will, there will probably be mistakes made. Please be patient. And I'm telling that to my players, especially ELH who has run this sort of stuff before. Here we go. So both sides are set into uh, attack and defense stats, I believe. And yep, the uh, green bar is going to be attack, and the blue bar is going to be defense. And just remember that every time uh, you roll an attack or you roll a defense, you decrement that number for the rest of the round. Right. And because these... Um, and the remnant fleet is in two groups, so I will be keeping track of them separately. I believe that can... is how this works. So, Cool. So, good guys get to go first, I believe. Well, I know what Hamasi's doing. If nobody says anything, Hamasi's going to tell them to open fire. Uh, I would like to do something, actually. If that's possible. I mean, wow. it depends on what you want to do, but yeah. Uh, let's see. We have three momentum. I want to use my talent, burn bright like a solar flare, and give the station a vicious one. All right. Okay. Okay. Alrighty so, then. The oh, station yeah. has one uh, vicious one attack. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. <clears throat> it does cost three times the power, though. So. <laughs> Look at the Kevins on the station. We can do power regenerations. Mm-hmm. You bet your sweet bippy. Well, that's the benefit of fleet combat is we don't worry about power or shields. Yeah. Okay. Huzzah. Fire! May I suggest taking out the big ship? 
Because if we can take out the big ship first, it'll kind of show we mean business. I mean, yeah, I'm personally all for that. All right. Uh, basically, how this looks is Demos finds the nearest EPS relay, pulls the panel off, and puts his hand right on it and dumps the energy he's built up into it. Neat. And then he flies across the hallway, smashing against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and bad idea. for firing the all attacks. Yeah, it's fair enough. Okay, so uh, that would be the stations rolling. Uh, how many challenge dice against my? Sh and it's just the ship's defense challenge dice, right? Yes, it should be the defense challenge dice, which, unless they have special stuff, should be equal to its scale. Right. And you would have had enough time to realize that the ships, the black, or the brick ships are tanks. Uh, they have yeah. thick armor, um, advanced shielding, that sort of thing. So well, in that case, uh, if they've courses. got ablative, advanced shields, or improved hull integrity, you yeah. get a plus one for each. Yeah, that's why I figured. Okay. Uh, so let's roll. And talents do nothing. Or focuses do nothing. In the... Nope, that's right. So they get so how points. many challenge dice am I rolling for? You're rolling ten. Let me just quickly double check the sheet of these guys. Okay, nine. Very nice. Ooh, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, talents, what do we have here? Have that, have that. Yeah, these things are... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nuts. Can I spend a momentum to reroll? No, unfortunately. I don't believe you can. Uh, I think uh, Demos already spent the momentum too, didn't he? Yep. Wouldn't. Oh, wait. Am I. Wouldn't Demos' thing have applied to us or no? Yeah, or... so it's a vicious one on all the effects. Oh. Oh, so that brings it up to. 13. Right, but I don't know whether or not that applies to fleet combat because there is no vicious rules as written. I oh. would allow that to give an additional plus one challenge dice in this instance. Or yeah, so someone roll another, that, another challenge die and we need to see a two here. Yeah. If I roll, knowing that, I would not have burnt that talent. Hmm. Well, live and learn. <clears throat> Not enough. Um, the station launches its barrage at the uh, Oxirish vessel. Uh, the, it rocks to the side. Uh, you see it venting a significant amount of uh, gamma radiation from its internals. But other than that, it's plowing on as normal. And something I should add is because it succeeded, mm -hmm. like it got more successes, it actually damages the station. As in, now we only have one more dot on the station, and, then and we if we get hit again and we fail, boom goes the station. No. I will, uh, um, because that it is hero station, I will give it several more dots, but yes, it will lose functionality over time. Also, that shot, if we're are we applying the three times power cost? So that's actually three energy loss. There is no energy loss. You don't track that in fleet combat. Okay. And now, because you attacked it, this one loses the number for its defense against its defense score, right? It loses one from its defense score for gotcha. the round, yes. Okay, so it's now an... Gotcha. Thank you kindly. Okay. What is going to happen is we'll have one of the little ships, just because I want to play a little more before bringing the bricks out. This ship over here is going to attempt to uh, take a shot at one of the ah, one of the gamma uh, ships. It has scale three and nothing beyond that, so it is only going to roll three challenge dice. Jinso be the three. All right, so I just roll three challenge dice in return. Mm -hmm. Yep. Christ. Okay. 
Okay. Which means yeah. the gamma is now suffering a uh, a problem as well. Okay. Um, your turn. And that loses one from here. Oh, we we could have one of the maybe one of the spheres do something. Yep. The spheres. I say the spheres are the first. Yes, take try to take this one. Yeah. Let's have one of the spheres attack. Yeah, that one. That Scotty thing. Sure. Um, so, um, because they're Borg and they have all these, you know, cool things like threat protocols and whatnot, I will give them a. Uh, the Borg spheres have an additional two bonus to their attack. Okay. So we will be rolling nine challenge dice because you said the spheres yep. were scaled to seven? Yep, that's correct. Okay. Well, I shall roll for the sphere. Uh, I don't think there's any way mathematically I could beat that. Let's find out. Nope. Yeah, there's scale four. I mean, I could roll two for everything. I was going to but... say you could roll two for that. Yeah, nope, not even close. So this one becomes damaged. I'll just put it there. <clears throat> now, I believe each ship gets two actions per combat, or per round, so they ship could do something else if they wish. Correct, yes, unless you're damaged and you lose that other turn. Right. So, so we could have that spear attack again? Question mark. I or that I is something that can be done. Usually, the way it works is you take your two actions at the same time, and you can attack a second time. There is nothing that stops you, mm -hmm. um, other than it just it decreases your attack score every time you fire. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but we could do something. Um... Like the remodulate each that. Yeah. Remodulate uh, shields. Have the move to or engage. have it scan for weakness on this. If we have it scan for weakness on this. Yeah. This is true. Then it makes this thing easier to hit. Uh, that seems like a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be having the spear do that then? Yeah, so okay. let's. Uh, if someone could roll me 2d20, 2D20, please. And then I will have the sphere roll to assist. I elect Kivan. I believe the number you're looking, to, looking for is a 14 from the sphere. Don't kill us, Kivan. <laughs> so what am I rolling? Uh, 2d20. 2d20, please. And this is difficulty one. Uh, actually, difficulty two, I should say, because of the range. Uh, sensors plus security. And that is one success. No. Oh. Borg does not assist. Yeah, they're. The amount of gamma... It appears that these ships have in gamma radiation as part of their natural environment, which is making it really, really difficult to figure out what's going on inside them. And now, I believe it is my turn. Mm-hmm. We will... Uh, let's see, he's already done. This guy is damaged. So I might as well do something with him before he potentially inevitably blows up. Uh, he is going to actually attempt to attack the Borg Sphere. I didn't say it was a smart move, but that's what he's doing. So that is an attack value of four. <laughs> Should, yeah, he yeah. goes boom. Yeah. Kablamo. 
One down. One down. <clears throat> and that's that. Who wants to go next? Um, question. How? What scale are the smaller ones here? Are they three? These are scale threes. That's correct. Okay. And if this was normal combat, I would um, be advising you that they are sticking within very close range to the big brick ships. But mm -hmm. since they're in fleet combat, that really doesn't matter anything tactically. Gotcha. Um... Well, I'm going to have the Apophis move up to here yeah, and open thing. fire on this one. All right. Five. I rolled a five. Nope, that's a damaged. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, I think it's only fair that it attempts to return fire. <laughs> Uh, another five, another four. Nope, it blows itself up. <laughs> <laughs> Tries to get in close to... Wait, they can shoot behind us? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that image in my head. It's like, uh, you notice that these, uh, most of their, the smaller ships are fast, uh, very maneuverable, but most of their weapons are front, frontward facing. Um, so if you guys happen to gain enough momentum to, you know, gain advantages, that might be something to look for. <clears throat> I kind of want to make the Perseus attack run him. Uh, sorry, which one? Perseus. Uh, no, sorry, which target? I wasn't paying. Oh, that guy. Oh, sorry. Okay. Move one zone and make an attack. Cool. Am I within attack range, or do I have? How far do I have to move? I so long as that's medium range, I believe you are within. You can do it. Yeah, I can do it. All right. And armor, a blade of armor, doesn't go towards defense, does it? It uh, does. It does yes, yes. That's plus oh. one. Okay. Um, and the Perseus ain't hitting today. Yeah, Perseus looks like it's gonna take a hit. Well, yep. Perseus takes a hit. Perseus takes a hit as it's highly maneuverable and it strafes your ventral uh, ventral side. And my advanced sensor speeds do nothing. No, no they don't. Um, they do tell you, however, that the species uh, piloting the other non-brick ships are a different species that appear to be more Class M variety than the whoever the Oxirish are on the brick ships. Do they have shields since they're pumping out gamma radiation? Um, yes. Yes, they do. Well, might I suggest that we have the Perseus use their second action to disengage? So it moves one's zone and its defense increases by two until the start of their next turn? <laughs> you move here. <laughs> and you go to five. That's <laughs> probably a good idea. Okay. Actually, because it's damaged, yeah, it, it doesn't get its next action. It is literally oh, lost. Right. It, oh, right, it took oh, it. Oh, yeah, that's right. My bad. Uh, yeah, that took damage. Let's mark that as... Yeah, that's what I'm doing with the dots. If uh, if they have red and blue dots, they have two turns. If they just have the red, they just have the one turn. Oh, that's a neat. Oh. Oh. Beta has green. <laughs> yeah. Well, gamma, beta, alpha are all like... I okay, know. people are switching it. All yeah. right. <clears throat> I have a decent idea. I will do that for my guys. Okay. This one. Uh, this one is going to attempt... Uh, so it is going to make a move action. And it is going to attempt to attack the USS Perseus. Well, I was good knowing my ship. Three. Ooh. And I only get possible. I only get three. Yeah, you only get three. What? Unless you have played them. Wait. Uh, what was I going to ask? If it's... Uh, it's... Yeah, so unfortunately I think that means that the Perseus is dead in the water. Dead. Destroyed. We'll figure out what happens after the battle is over and done with. Oh, Either I way, it is not dead in the water. Wouldn't it roll 
four instead of three, or is if it's damaged, its defense goes down by one? Is it just attack? Still four. Yeah. But it attack, so its attack score would go down by one. And then, since it was on defense, I think its defense would still be four, if I'm reading correctly. Yeah, it should still be four. Maybe somebody uh, yeah. added the wrong thing. So yeah, I guess, yeah, roll another challenge die and pray it's a two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so Q shows up, snaps his fingers, and this ship immediately takes damage instead. Okay. She says, no, 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 not today. <laughs> I can just see Q doing that, too. Uh <laughs> Nope, he has a new child to raise, so that's a different matter. Um, okay, your guys' turn. Uh, Beta's gonna volley, computer volley. <laughs> uh, this one. Ooh, fun. Okay. Uh, how many is that? Three. Um, torpedo volley. Uh, if you're scale three, then I believe it is still just three attack. Yep. Ooh, well, here we go. Nope. Couple yeah, second action, right? Yep, uh, you have yeah. one more action. Want to do yeah. the scan for weakness? Oh, yeah, sure. I was going to do ramming speed, but sure, that sounds like a better option. <laughs> <laughs> I am the voice of reason. Uh, yeah, let's get a weakness on this one. Okay, I believe that is sensors. Uh, so, I'll roll me 2d20 for that. Um, try to roll under a 15. Can't and... you have a specific person on the on it roll? Um, I, the, the, only the support captain is statted for it. Nine and two. Nine and two. Oh, those are both successes. Two yeah, successes. Those, those are both successes. Yeah. Nice. Um, and well, we'll we'll roll for the ship. See if the ship assists. That way, you'll get momentum. All right. Uh, that would be sensors. Uh, sensors plus security. Okay. Oh, we have the focus. Nope. Oh well, that's enough. Uh, you are able to figure out. You're you're able to figure out where some weak po some weak points in their armor might be. Take a bit to exploit, okay. but yep. So this I one broadcast that to everyone. <laughs> we'll just put that. Aim for the antenna. Aim for the trench that's two meters wide. <laughs> well, let's say that's weakness. Cool. Okay. So, uh, this ship is going to attempt to attack. It's going to attempt to attack the station. How dare it. How Shit. dare it indeed. Oh well, boy. That's Well we still get ten dice. Yeah, I'll go I roll ahead. In. I'll roll for the station. I okay. got it. Doesn't the Borg tack <laughs> thing give us a bunch of perks too? Um that was my that was when I was reading group instead of like group as a whole instead of group as a single vessel through the so now whatever hap okay. whatever bonuses the board get the board get for themselves okay yeah. yeah that's a significant amount so that ship is <clears throat> in it in lowering its shields to fire uh, the station does a quick uh, phaser burst into its weapons into the opposing ship's weapons array and manages to cause a significant amount of damage. Let's see, I think at this point, Crawford will try and send, like, a voice-only message to the captain he was speaking to earlier. Mm-hmm. And at this point, just try to intimidate them. Okay. Uh, like, let's try this again. You stand down. Uh, this is going to be a uh, presence plus command. Uh, difficulty of two... And if you have intimidation or anything along that line, uh, I would say that the station can assist with uh, probably weapons plus security, given what's been going on. <laughs> okay. Or yeah, I don't. I don't have any security communication. That yeah, that would work but... too. Yeah, comms plus security for the station. That's a better one. 
one of those rare rolls. I don't have a focus here, but let's see what happens. Yeah. Well, that's already one extra momentum. Three successes. Security. I have a crazy idea. Oh, thanks, Station. <laughs> I'm not station. rolling anymore. <laughs> We, we uh, have a momentum now, which is interesting. Yes. The momentum yes. and a threat to get rid of the complication. <laughs> no, no. Let's keep it. No, 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 no. Let's, no. let's no, no, see no. our death no, no, no. glorious. No, no, no. Witness no, no. We're me. We're off the complication. Okay, you are not a Klingon. <laughs> We're buying off that complication. I thought it was two right. momentum for one complication. I could be two wrong. Two momentum, but we only have the one momentum, yeah. so it would be a momentum and a threat. Oh. Yeah. You could give me the threat. I yeah, think that's what that seems doing. dangerous. Yeah, I was about to say, McCall, you seemed a little too anxious for that one. <laughs> we'll do we'll do a momentum and a threat to buy that off. Okay. Demo spray paints himself witness me. <laughs> no, lights on the station on the mushroom part of the station just start looking like bullseye. <laughs> uh. Shoot here. Uh. Dang it, why'd my training protocol go up? <laughs> no, they're strobing bullseye inward to the center spire. I, I have a like crazy a idea. It's fine. I've already intimidated them. So let's see where this goes. Okay. Uh, the, anyone paying attention to the comms um, the, uh, between the ships, notice a quick um, burst of communication between all the ships. Um, immediately their weapon systems power down and they start uh, they reform feel free to move your any other ship tokens around as you wish uh, I say we pull back and make like a defensive line <clears throat> I was about to say we should make a power move and have them surround them but <laughs> they begin to slowly um, the, the small ships first, followed shortly thereafter by the large ones. They turn slowly and move back towards the gate from whence they came. No response is given to your communication other than that. Have the bigger ships started moving towards it as well? Or are they uh, staying? Yeah. Smaller ships first, then the larger ones. Then the large brick ships follow le last. And he, uh, once they're gone, Crawford will just send a fleet-wide communication, and he'll include the two Borg spheres in that. All right, damage report. How's everyone doing? This is Korea, the person who took a major hit. We're assessing damage now. This is Crowley. We have engineer teams on our gamma section beginning repairs now. No casualties. Kotel from the Amherst. No problems to report here. This is Nolan of the Hawking. We're doing just fine. Uh, well, what did I name my captain? Al Hadid. Uh, this is Al Hadid. Al Habid of the Polar Stern. We didn't even get to fire our weapons. This is uh, Captain Vahol of the Apophis. Can we still shoot them? <laughs> <laughs> um, don't hit them directly, but let's let's scare them off a little faster. <laughs> That's not going to end well. What I'm saying is, don't hit them, but just. Give them a warning. <laughs> Engage a Firing a warning salvo of torpedoes. I. <laughs> I will do a warning shot. Engaging in engaging attack pattern. Yeah, you'd better run. <laughs> uh, I only rolled one success. Does that mean I actually hit them? <laughs> <laughs> Fire a warning shot across their nose. I said said across their nose, not up. I miss them beautifully. And with with a series of uh, slightly uncontrolled pyrotechnics in their wake, the ships pass back through the gate and out the way they came. 
All right, cap. Um, let me look at the captains of the support fleet. Um, Perseus is <laughs> Correa. Uh, Captain Correa and Captain Crowley. Uh, feel free to make your way and dock in the station, so we can give you a more expedited repair. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, be prepared. Aye. aye. Captain, uh, it would be a slow go. We're on maneuvering thrusters only. We took a huge hit to our uh, nacelles. Of course. Captain, says Durval, the, all of our internal docking berths are taken up with the ambassadorial ships. We will have to ask some of them to depart. This is Captain Crowley. Our engineers can deal with the repairs here. We have worker bees already being dispatched. All right. Thank you, Captain. And he'll send out, like, a text-wide message to some of the ambassadors and see if one or a couple of them would be willing to move their ships out briefly so the Perseus can dock and be repaired. Uh, the Vitars, the Nalu, and the Kasala are volunteering to depart to make space for their defenders. The Kasala sa ambassador said that he got or that she got to watch the fight from her viewport made for some interesting tactical study um let we would only have to have like one of the ambassadorial ships move out correct i believe so yes okay uh let's let's have the kasala move out all right we will go back to All right, let me go back here. All of these tokens are going away now. Game was just going to track what uh, gateway they went through. I believe it was gate 14, the same one they entered through. Is, is Hamasi on the bridge for the um, ops? She is. She's uh, coordinating damage teams with Dusk. He's just going to give her a side glance when uh, when this all kind of ends. She does that motion with the head that says, come over here and we'll talk. Yeah, he'll, he'll do so. Can I help you? Why did we get into a fight? I'm still trying to figure that out myself. Right. I'm going to write up a report. Uh, I'll send it your way as well. You probably want to fast track that one to the Admiral as well. Oh, that's who I was going to send it to. Hmm. Uh, Dusk, but despite the invitation to stay, the Vitars ambassador as well as the um, Kasala ambassadors and the Nalu are all taking on their ships and leaving the station. So she just says to whichever captain happens to be listening at the time, well, that's uh, three species gone. Great. Although I can see why they'd want to leave. If you excuse me, Captain, so I'm gonna go back to my security office now. Of course. So, and because it's been a day and the ambassadors are doing things, who's doing what now? Hmm. Apparently the Draven have insulted the Klingons in some fashion. And the Shocker. Medell and the Vitars have also decreased. That's cool. <clears throat> uh, so that is pretty much where I'm at for the plot. If you guys wish to carry on and have other scenes, now would be a good time for it. Oh yeah. Uh, if this is like the end of the day thing after like, all the reports have been made, uh, Demos is going to be at the bar. Ah, bar scene. Okay. Who else wishes to be at said bar? Um, 
I think Crawford would be there. I think after this day, he probably needs a drink. After everything going on recently, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join Demos. Okay. Thankfully, most people seem to be in the bar already. Okay. All right. I'll be there, but I'm gonna be talking with any of the, the diplomatic people or the diplomatic groups that are still here. Oh yes, there still are several. I mean, those that have a distinct hatred for the Borg have done have gone away, but there are several still around. <clears throat> Quite a complete loss. Uh, I believe that is everyone. Uh, anyone else wish to be in the bar? Doesn't sound like it. Okay. Take it away, Demos. How's your day been? Well, a couple of repairs here, a couple of ship repairs there. You know, nothing after, nothing more enjoyable than a good skirmish and a little repair action. Other. <laughs> yeah. So, what are we going to do about Nia? I had a fun idea. He goes to um, what's it called? Uh, sensitivity training. Have you been watching some old Earth comedies or something like that? A little bit. Getting caught up on how Earth history is different from my own. And wow. You know, that's probably not a bad idea. I mean, I do want to actually get that kid working on something a little more for the department. Because, I mean, I do see something in him. I just, there's just something spooking him that I I, I just don't know enough about him yet that I need to talk to keep talking to him about. And it's just what he did during the conference at that particular moment didn't help. Yeah. It could have caused a diplomatic incident. It could have been viewed as an insult uh, to the ambassadors, for one. Two, Rami is considered an individual. That means she has rights. So him forcing a change on her violates her rights. And, he, you know, he's pro, he's been holding up thing. it was just a prank, bro, type thing, but... Yeah. Yeah, I have a feeling something haunts him. Believe me, I know all too well about that. Seeing those Borg just brought back some really uncomfortable memories about my last... Um, God, what's the word? My la my last station, um, my last position before coming to Cerberus. Hmm. And what do you have to deal with the Borg or? Yeah, the well, it was during the last final incursion of the Borg. You know, before everything happened with them, and they, most of them, you know, they were neutralized kind of had a well let's just say someone I respected kind of want me to try to do something a little unethical and it kind of just burned me really bad that's why I was at the academy for so many years right after that before I came to Cerberus because I just did not want to be in the field mm. you know the Borg are interesting to me actually they're kind of window to my past before we all went to this and he like holds up his hand and like just flexes his hand we cut pieces out of ourselves replaced them with implants made ourselves better we looked a lot better we made sure to streamline it but when we first started out we looked just as rough yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily have any, well, unwarranted hatred towards the Borg, because I, <laughs> one of the shifts I was initially on was destroyed during Wolf 359, and then the interaction that I had with my crew during the, their last incursion, it's literally like I've seen the worst of both sides, so it's it's interesting to see. Yeah. 
at, <sighs> at this point in the conversation, Crawford will kind of sit at your table, just like thumps down heavily with a drink in his hand. It's Demos been, just looks at you and goes, "Sir, it's been a rough couple days." Yeah, no shit. Couldn't agree with you more, Captain. As he sort of like sips at his drink. Uh, so there are good Borg. And we got into a fight that I feel like we could have talked out of. But. <laughs> but they seem pretty set in destroying those Borg that weren't part of the collective anymore. And. I wasn't okay with that. I can very much see where you mean on that. I mean, some people are going to have a prejudice against a person or a race or a thing, even though that thing might have changed drastically or it's not the same as it used to be. <laughs> Believe me, I understand those feelings. I can only hope that they don't come back. I think we could potentially keep up some extra sensors around that particular gate. Maybe throw something beyond the gate and see what keep it, see if we can keep an eye on them. Maybe maybe that's the next reconnaissance mission we need to send out is through gate fourteen. It's an option we have, and I mean, now that we have someone who has more knowledge of this technology than we do, I mean, is there a way to shut that gate down? that's going to be a great discussion I think maybe I will go and talk to them it might take me a little while to be comfortable to talk with them but I feel like I might be willing to give this a try of yeah. course keep on if you want to go talk with them I'll hold your hand how about that okay as long as you're not literally holding my hand Demos I mean I know we're starting to become friendly but not that friendly Crawford will kind of chuckle at that statement. Still run across the room. What's wrong with men holding hands? There's nothing wrong with men holding their hands. There's nothing nothing wrong, Commander. <laughs> no offense. And like for the first time in a while, Crawford is actually laughing. Um and he kind of uh looks at Demos quickly uh Demos and it's just like Um as much as I hate to interrupt this conversation. Could I have you leave just briefly, Lieutenant Commander? I'd like to talk with Keevan personally. Oh, I was already planning on leaving. Keevan? Demos? He'll get up and head on out, and he's gonna go uh, visit one of the Borgs if he can. Alright. <clears throat> so, uh, this whole situation with Nia... What are you wanting to do with him? Well, Demos and I were having a discussion just before you showed up, and I think we should try to, I don't want to say counsel, but definitely talk to Nia about his interaction, because Demos very, feels very adamant about what he did to Rami's imager. I know he didn't do anything to her maliciously however I understand where he's coming from on that I do see some goodness in that kid as do I I mean the uh, commander kind of you know nudging it his head in the direction of Dorum seems to like him somewhat at least so he's dating my daughter <laughs> Hey, aren't you supposed to not like him if he's dating your daughter? Just saying. I, I feel I... like a potty would be the shotgun dad in that relationship. <laughs> Something just gives me an idea. Funny, I imagined it the other way around, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, Captain. Uh... I, d I definitely see some... I, I see where he is useful. I mean, I was having a nice talk about a subject I hadn't been comfortable talking about in a while with him briefly. I wasn't very open about it yet, but 
Yeah, I, I see him doing other things for with us. As do I. He's come quite far in the, since he first arrived here. Yeah, I'm. I'm st- I mean, I'm still st- still learning a lot of the extra support staff outside of engineering, but the ones that I'm working with mostly, I mean, I'm getting to know them. So, but even them, I I don't know everything about them. So I, you know, I want to, I don't want to say I want to give them, well, that's not mine to give a field commission, but you know what I mean? I'm thinking about giving him a more supervisory role within engineering, if that's okay with you. I mean, I personally don't see an issue with that. Maybe giving him a little more responsibility will scare him straight isn't the right terminology, but you get what I mean. I do very much get what you mean. I, I Honestly, and this is going to seem surprising, I haven't actually dealt with much Trill in 70 years, so... You know, the the intricacies of the multiple lifetimes still... There's something I've researched, but I haven't been able to actually talk about firsthand or learn firsthand, which is kind of a glaring glaring hole in my intelligence, to be honest. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, you know, besides... So, yeah, I mean, maybe I might have to try to set something up. I'm thinking, I was thinking about something with all of the stuff that's been going on with the hubs recent, with the hub lately and the gates. I'm thinking of expanding out with your permission, of course. Um, Astrometrics and the Transwarp monitoring deck to actually encase two decks, 98 and 99, spread that out a little more so we actually have more c- scientific cursory stuff to do. But, I mean, since we've got the manufacturing plants working so well down in the under sections. It's certainly not a bad idea. Uh, consider that permission granted, Lieutenant Commander. Thank you, Captain. So, I think I'll go talk to Nia later after the conference has officially ended and get him and I on the same page as to his reconditioning. Um, no, that doesn't sound right. Retraining? His evolving. Mentoring? His evolution. Mentoring. Okay, his mentoring. I like that. His mentoring. That's certainly a good idea. I'll... And he kind of quiets down for a bit before he says, it's like, you kind of remind me of, well, someone I know, Lieutenant Commander. Well, my families, our families do get pretty big from Denobulans, so <laughs> probably it's very possible. I mean, honestly, I haven't talked to much of my family in quite a while. I mean, the last time I talked to somebody, I think was about a year ago before I left Earth. Well, uh, you remind me of someone who I guess he's technically my adoptive father uh he was a denobulan like you as well he he starts cracking a little bit of a surprised yet that big denobulan grin it's like and i uh, he um, cringes a bit at the smile it's like even though i live one i still can't get used to that <laughs> um i don't know what to say about that captain um <laughs> I mean, I mean, yes, I mean, I know this is a little... <laughs> believe me, you should have seen some of the looks I got back on Beta Z with this, especially from women. They were... Some of them were a little freaked out by it the first couple of times I saw that. I can certainly see why. No offense to you. Now he really busts out a grin. <laughs> None taken, sir. <laughs> he, he's trying really hard to keep like a somewhat composed like countenance and it's just like it's nice to have someone I can at least somewhat see as a father figure even if he's below me in the command chain kind of winks 
Well, I mean, we can all learn from everybody. I mean, I I will learn from anybody. So, I mean, I'm I'm humbled that you look at me as a father figure. I mean, I can only just hope to keep up as a good example to you know, be supportive. I mean, I'm I'm here to help, Captain, and you know, maybe maybe you and I can talk more i mean we haven't honestly i've i stick my head too much into my little hole of engineering and it's it's a way for me to well needless to say i've had you know some misplaced loyalty before with you know other officers especially with my last posting so it's a little hard for me to sometimes get myself out there which now that we're talking this reminds me um how's that denobulan lemur i got um, i think you cut up there that was oh sorry i asked how that denobulan lemur i got keevan was doing oh it's doing well i mean he's actually starting to learn some extra tricks interesting I'm glad that you at least seem to like him. Oh, I mean, he's a fascinating specimen. I mean, not that I've thought about... Never mind. Um, let's just say he's learning to really use his prehensile tails. I see. I basically just turned him into Apom from Pokemon. You realize that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No I was going to say tails. I am, I am, I am well aware. <laughs> I heard a plural and I was very confused. But okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. It's a cross, a cross of Apom and Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog. There you go. Oh, oh God. <laughs> okay. I like it. We have, we have to make that up now. <laughs> oh God. I'm sure there's fan art out there already. <laughs> okay. Um, Elh, anything that you'd like to do? Any scenes in particular? I would want to touch base with Demos about his report. Okay. And would this be as Hamasi? Yep. Okay. Um, let's do this in the security office. Demos, you're just preparing to figure out how you're going to get over to the Transwarp Hub. And in walks Hamasi. Do you have a moment, Lieutenant Commander? I do indeed. Actually, I just finished this as well. He's going to hand her the report. Hmm. She takes it, scrolls through it a little bit, humps again, and goes, hmm, well, I guess this means we should have a discussion. And uh, I make sure the door actually is shut uh, before I say, so I'm getting the sense you are having some issues with Crawford. I'm in charge of not just the Starfleet personnel here, but the civilians as well, including the ambassadors. So this little display of power put everyone at risk, including the children aboard the station. It's understandable. Personally, I think we probably could have done a uh, more diplomatic approach, but again, I'm not the commander of the station anymore. I only had that role for a couple months. I think he's a fine captain if the job's easy. If it's all laid out for him in a simple palette choice of do you want blue today or do you want yellow today? Frankly, in my opinion, he's a deer in headlights. I can see that. I've witnessed such behavior before. What would you suggest? The Admiral to come in and examine the logs. Go over the recordings. Either she whips them into shape or I don't know. Is this his first posting? Like, he's a captain. I don't have access to his files in that depth. Out of character, I think it is. I believe it is his first um, posting as captain, yes. 
then yeah, I say yes, uh, this would be his first command on his own. Then he needs to lean on his first officer more. Honestly, I think he leans on Dolrum too much. At times he does, but other times it's... As I said, deer in headlights. There have been numerous times where I've watched Dolrum step up to the occasion and take charge. This whole conference was Dolrum. Well, and uh, Hamasi taps a few things on the pad. I'll add that to the Admiral's report. Uh, however, uh, yeah, I would be remiss if I did not at least say that you don't exactly have to like the captain to get along with him. It is your duty as a Starfleet officer to serve under whoever, whoever you are commanding until they make a decision which would... I don't want to use the word mutiny, but if they make a decision that you feel is uh, not worth following and you're willing to stake your career on it... Well, let's put it this way. If someone was going to point a blaster at him or a kid... I'm keeping that kid safe. Noted. Was there anything else you wanted to discuss while I'm here? Uh, I don't know if I need permission to leave the station for the trans uh, warp hub. Uh, why are you headed to the hub? Some questions for the Borg. I'm sure it can be arranged. Excellent. I can take out the Apollo not armed so I'll have uh, Dusk get on that immediately you'll probably be cleared to go in a few hours thank you ma'am of course and uh, next time maybe I shouldn't uh, need to come down here because if I'm picking up all this just observing you it's likely that other people have noticed too I'm not really trying to hide it well, just remember, as a member of the senior staff, your actions do reflect on those under you. That is true. Very well. I will get your request in, and Hamasi leaves. Uh, Demolus just does a ping to Rami to find out where Decon's at. Decon has, has been attempting to leave the uh, station a well, in the Apollo for the last four hours, I have kept the bay doors shea, uh, sealed because it is not it has not left with permission. Okay. I'm going to go to the Apollo. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, just because I want to minimize GM single player interactions first, are there any other people that want to have scenes together? Um, let's have one with Nia and Kivon. Okie dokie. Yeah, let's roll this one right now. Sure. Okay, uh, Nia, you are probably just getting off the bar. It's been your nightly endeavor to... Actually, no, I think it's far, far funnier for you to be leaving the commander's quarters and making your way on back down to your duty shift when Kievan interrupts you. Wait, now, are we saying that this is actually far enough away from the, you know, like, has the conference the, conference officially ended? Uh, conference has yet to officially end. Um, there will be a small wrap-up scene at the very end of this, but nothing major. Actually, so remember, actually, Nia is technically refined, reminded to his quarters oh, due to he? Demos... Oh. My apologies, yep. I forgot about that particular. Uh... As did I. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so you yeah, find... I remember I got I, I got a little heavy-handed with the father figure kind of thing right there. Okay. My apologies. Then we will find Nia in the enlisted in his quarters when there's a chime at the door. We could say Vans there just to have <laughs> keeping him company. <laughs> okay, sure. That's all the more fun. Uh, feel free to start. I will get tokens going as I find them. There's Nia. And there's Keevan. Ring! 
enter. Nia? Um, the conference is nearly over, but I did want to kind of discuss some things with uh, Of course. And Nia, firstly, I can tell in your voice, you don't have to be nervous. Just... I needed to I need to explain a few more things at least on my side before commander lieutenant commander Demos wants to probably talk with you further on about what you did with Mhm mm Now I get your point and I get his point and I even just had a talk with the captain about this so um What's the best way uh, for me to put this? Well, is there... Uh, better yet, I actually want to put this out to you. What do you... What do you say about what you did with the conference and Rami's image when she was talking to those other ambassadors? No, I... I'm sorry, I, like, blanked out for, like, half a second. You're asking him what? I'm sorry. <laughs> It's all right. Oh, how do how does he feel about what he did with Rami's imaging and the, during the with the talk with the ambassadors while we him and I were talking up on the you know observation deck in the comp. You're asking how Nia feels about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, mm -hmm. Oh, got it. Okay, sorry. Uh, I mean, I regret it now, but I mean, in the moment, it wasn't anything malicious. I didn't think it was that bad and I mean I, I, see, I see your point in this I do see Dolrum's or Demos's point in this about his feelings about Rami and the imaging and the changing and you know Demos and I have had our discussions about this so I wanted to have my discussion with this about you with it with you I understand what you did. I'm perfectly... <laughs> I'm perfectly understanding of it all. And, I mean, maybe the ambassadors might have had an interesting moment with that. However, probably not the best thing to do in this kind of protocol. With a... Not necessarily... It's not first contact, obviously, but with this kind of diplomatic protocol and potentially we might have to go through a little bit of extra training on that I and mean, maybe a few of us need a little refining on our diplomatic skills well, I can certainly see why and I'll say like during the course of this conversation you probably noticed like his uniform is a little disheveled I mean, you might notice maybe a lipstick mark somewhere on his cheek or his neck, but he's been keeping calm composure. Um, Jaren, is somebody else in here? Have, yes, but or... it doesn't matter now. What, what do you... <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Um, I have a... I'm just, I'm just going to get this out of the way real fast because I've, I've thought about this since after the little incursion with the Borg and the hostilities that we just had out there. And I just want you to know that I'm still very much keeping to my word about wanting to help you evolve more as a crewman on Cerberus here. And... I have, I, I would like to get to know you more because I don't know as much about Trill as I should. And, you know, I, I can only imagine everything that's going on. I can't imagine everything going on in your head, and that's my problem. So the scientist in me kind of needs to understand that because I just don't understand everything. I mean, I can certainly 
try to help you understand troll culture. Of course. Well, I would appreciate that. And, you know, I'm now that I've had some time to really work on some things with engineering and I'm starting to actually be able to take a little more time away from hands on work and actually doing a little more, you know, of the finishing touches with engineering. And he, actually, and what Kivan actually, <laughs> Demos might not have, or most Jesus. Um, Neil might not have noticed that he actually is rubbing around a piece of fabric in his in Kevin's fingers in one of his hands. Uh, are you just? Yeah, I'm sure at this point he notices it, but it's like, are you just fidgeting with that, or? Well, why don't you fidget with it a little more? And he turns over. A piece of fabric and it is very much like his collar insignia which um okay i'm cheating right now and i'm looking at the one on memory alpha for petty officer first class which technically he is as a specialist mm -hmm. it's the one that has a dot in front of it for chief petty officer ah yes okay and he hands it over to him i want to see what else you can do for the station and for me so I'm putting a little more responsibility in your hands, Chief Petty Officer. I, I um, I, okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> Believe me, I've, I'm 71 years old, so I've seen and heard a lot and Believe me, that reaction wasn't very much different from the first time I had to actually, you know, I was given a promotion to Lieutenant Junior Grade. I was just not expecting it. So I want to see you tomorrow morning when we're wrapping up with the, the morning that we're wrapping up with the delegates that are still here, 8 a.m. beforehand, just to go over a few things before I want you with me at the conference when we do the final wrap up. No, of course I'll I'll be there. I'm glad to hear that petty officer. I'm going to leave you for the night. So I'll see you later. And and keep <laughs> I would, and keep I would like up. to imagine that as you turn to leave somehow for some reason the door Neil is standing in front of like opens and you see Vayan just sitting on the edge of the bed as you're walking out and he's just like damn it and <laughs> closes the door get back in there <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, no Keevan Keevan still walks out and Keevan was young thinks... once too yep exactly that's exactly it I was that young once too you know, actually, I might have to think about... You know, I'll think about that later. <laughs> uh, and I think I know what uh, Demos is going to do, so I, I think let's take that offline, just to minimize GM Demos role-playing. Um, and if there is nothing else to do, there the conference will wrap up on its third day. The remaining... Uh, I get to roll the... Um, rando diplomacy a couple more times just to see what happens. <clears throat> increased, increased, ink. Hey, all right. Increased. So the, the one with the Nalu doesn't ha doesn't count because they're no longer here. But reroll. Yeah, reroll that <laughs> one. Ooh, hey, uh, Casella nice. aren't here, so Casella oh, didn't. Damn it. Go away now. And the Draven and the Rock. There we go. So once again. Uh, Bel Belshir is just going around, or Belthier is going around pissing off the Alpha Quadrants people, apparently. <laughs> he had to say something about the ears. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, probably. <clears throat> uh, Captain Crawford, is there any part or is there any particular speech you'd like to quickly give the assembled delegates before they head on their way? I know um... I'm putting you on the spot, but... Uh... Let me, let me think of something here for a second. It'll uh, probably just be like a general 
Oh, like, I hope that your time here, even with some of our uh, interruptions, have served as a valuable time for trade of both information and uh, culture. And we hope that going forward in the future that these relationships that were formed improve and that hopefully we can make this maybe kind of like a yearly summit. Very well. On their way out, the ambassadors will each in turn give you their thanks, including Prince Aksha, the uh, Ulki, the Ulke ambassador, despite the fact that you d decided not to pick up and uh, give take one of his harem offers, but <clears throat> you know, he understands that diplomacy is a long and winding road and hopes that you will reconsider the offer in the future. <clears throat> but other than that, I believe that this would be a good place uh, to... Oh, yes? Is it possible for the station to get a message from uh, one of the transfer pubs? Um, easily. What would you like it to say? Uh, it's coming in on a Federation channel. Okay. And it's directed for Captain Crawford. Ah, I see. We're going to be leading into next major session. Okay. Yeah. Um, Lieutenant Dusk calls Captain Crawford to operations. They're receiving a message. It is from the Dark Royal. No. Do well, you want it here or in your ready room, sir? Uh, send it to my ready room. Okay. Done. Into the ready room. I'm afraid I don't have the proper tokens set up yet for the Dark Royal crew, so we're just uh, going to pretend that he is in the ready room. That's fine. All right. Captain's office. There we are. <clears throat> okay, Captain. So the message is coming from a Federation communication array, and it says Dark Royal A. And it's just beeping. And he'll you know, patch the message through. Captain Crawford. And you see a uh, black-haired, very dark-skinned cornet in a Federation uniform on a Federation <laughs> bridge. An old Prometheus-style bridge. And he just has a big, toothy grin. I am pleased to report I have found the Ophion A. Although I've took the liberty of renaming it and using my command codes upon it. But I have good news. Most of the crew, if not all, have been found and recovered. They are eager to get back to Federation space and eager to have command of this vessel once again. I will hand control over to you and then you in turn can hand it back to them. As you know undoubtedly and know that this ship has been lost for over at least 20 years. They need some time. Be seeing you soon, Captain. Dominus out. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was like, who is this? And then you said the name. I'm like, okay, never mind. We're good. Yeah. Captain Dominus it's... of the Cornet ship Dark Royal, occasionally dipping in and out of Cerberus Station in between their own runs, and has hmm. now apparently found a long-lost Federation starship. So what happens with that next? We will find that out next uh, session, which will... The next major session will be March the 6th. So, I... So, yeah. And Crawford knows that he did not leave on a Federation vessel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. So, um, thank you all for playing. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you guys all next time. So, bye-bye. Bye. Bye.